the truth within us and within each other. We share that purpose of joining our will with God's will at this time together to listen for the example and the, and the love that is communicated through these pages, through all that was given from Jesus to Helen and now to all of us. We thank you. Thank you for our brother who gives it to us so freely and thank you to each other for sharing it. Amen. 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 Okay, so if you have the notes, it would be page 17 or page 18, actually. Um, it starts and it says, <clears throat> the reason I direct everything that is unimportant. Is that page 18 on the actual page or is this page 18 electronically? Oh, no, it's page 18 on the actual page. But I don't know which draft I sent you. If I sent you the complete draft. Yes, you then, did. I okay, did. Then, it, then it has pages to it. As, uh, it would be page 18 of 323. Um, I recorded. But I can just read it. You find, you see it? Can you give me a clue of what to search for? Um, yes. Okay, let me give you a date. Okay. The closest date I could find. The closest date I can find is, um, wow. Well, have the page number like you said? I don't know where they sent them. <clears throat> What were the first words again, Teddy? Uh, um, it, the first words, they start with... The reason? No, it, they start with... Um, there's, a lo there's a long... It, it starts with, the reason I direct everything that is unimportant. Unimportant. I'm going to search that. Okay. Okay, I got it. Okay, great. It's on page 21 in the version I have. Okay, very good. At the top. Right, at the top. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Roberta. And, and is this, I, I think it's around where we stopped last time. Um, it's close to it. Yeah. yeah, it's close to it. But there's a very specific reason why I wanted to read this. And one of the reasons is Ken Wapnick has always insisted that the Holy Spirit doesn't get you parking spaces. <laughs> and, you know, Jesus has, was fond of saying, you know, your father's in charge. You know, all, thing, all good things will be given to you. Everything you need will be given to you. Um, seek ye first the kingdom and all else will be given to you. Um, and this is a section that goes directly to that and explains actually why Jesus is asking Helen to refer all things to him. So I just thought, I just thought it was interesting. Now, I sort of get why, see, Ken, I, I think... Ken was really, really, he loved Helen and Helen loved him like a son. Mm -hmm. And Ken really wanted people to take this course seriously. And I think he sort of had a suspicion that, you know, people could get the idea that all they have to do is ask for things and they're going to be given. And when they're not, that would prove that the book was not true and they turn away from the course. I don't necessarily think he was trying to not, you know, be true to what Jesus was saying. I just think that he was trying to not turn people off based on experiences that they have, thinking that they'd done what they were asked of. The other part is that in the notes, there's a lot of sections 
that, you know, Jesus says this is not part of, of, of a course in, of, of, a, of the text of A Course in Miracles. But I think it's important for people at this point in time to read this stuff to see how Jesus really, really relates to us and what's going on and how close and personal Jesus really can be with us if we want him to be and if we allow ourselves to be with him. And I think that's really important because the truth is, you know, everyone can get guidance. You don't have to be special. There's, there's things that a lot of teachers say about getting guidance and the need to be still or the need to like, you know, have forgiven yourself. And I don't find any of that to be true because the guidance that I originally got was in the midst of like, real tempests in my life, real storms in my life where there was no peace of mind and I wasn't quiet and I wasn't trying to get guidance. And, and Jesus would just drop in and he would tell me all I needed to know until I finally took it seriously that it was really him and he really wanted to guide me. And even to this day, like I can sit, I can get direction in the middle of the night, waking up, I can get direction walking down the street when I need it. I mean, they're willing to communicate with me whenever communication is necessary. And it's not based on anything that I'm doing. It's based on who we are in relationship to God and in relationship to Jesus as our savior. Um, and that's what I think the important thing is. The important thing I think is the nature of the relationship we have with God Jesus's function in the atonement and our, our ability to get the guidance in here, as well as the recognition that we need it because we don't know what the hell's going on and we don't know what to do. It's not like we know, oh, here's where I sit still and I learn. No, we don't know anything at all. We really do need some out of time help from some sort, something that has an overview to help us shorten our use and need for time. And that's what the miracle does. So I find this section particularly interesting in the light of what people claim and also in the light of what Ken has said. So it's one of the reasons why I wanted to read it today. Um, so it starts out like this. The reason I direct everything that is unimportant is because it is no way to waste your free will. If you insist on doing the trivial your way, you waste too much time and will on it. Will cannot be free. If it is tied up in trivia, it never gets out. I will tell you, I will tell exactly what to do in connection with everything that doesn't matter. This is not an area where choice should be invested. There is better use of time. You have to remember to ask me to take charge of all the minutia and it will be taken care of so well and so quickly that you cannot bog down in it. The only remaining problem is that you will be unwilling to ask because you are afraid not to be bogged down in it. Don't let this hold us back. If you will ask, I will arrange these things, even if you're not too enthusiastic. Which is, you know, that's interesting. That's like a, a good friend saying, hey, listen, man, I'm willing to help you any way possible. Uh, even if you don't want the help, but you're just willing to ask. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this whether you like it or not. The more you like it, the more you, you know, like it, the more you're going to ask. But even if you don't like it, I'm still going to do it for you because I'm your friend. I have a function and this is what I want to do. So here it goes. Prayer can be very specific in little matters. If you need a coat, ask me where to find one. I know your taste well, and I also know where the coat is that you would eventually buy anyway. <laughs> I, <you know. laughs> 
um, if you don't like the code afterwards, that is what would have you have happened anyway. I did not pick out the coat for you. You said you wanted something warm, inexpensive, inexpensive, and capable of taking rough wear. I told you you could get a Borgana, but I let you get a better one because the furrier needed you too. Now, that's an interlocking chain of, that's people in an interlocking chain of a miracle where everybody's getting, you know, a benefit out of what it is you're doing, including buying a coat because the furrier needs the money for the, to fix the coat. So everybody's getting exactly what they want. And when he says that miracle is an interlocking chain, which makes brothers one in God, that's specifically how it works using a coat, which is really interesting. You know, it's not this, you know, this mysterious thing where, you know, we're trying to be one with God. No, we just need a coat. Note, however, that it is better in terms of the criteria you establish. I could do this because you saw the coat more that way than in terms of particular material. You thought of clients yourself a few days ago, and then you decided against it because Borgana is price fixed. Then you remembered a coat Grace once got there that was much cheaper and seemed pretty much the same and asked yourself whether it was really right to be sold on a particular trade name through advertising. That opened your mind. Now, I mean, this, he's saying, listen, you can open your mind through anything at all, not just through trying to let go of the, not because you're trying to let go of your ideas to get in touch with God, but because anything at all that allows you to open your mind just a little bit will allow communication to get in. Now that's amazing because it's not spiritual at all. It's just practical and useful. It's useful to those outside of time who want to communicate. And it's useful for us in time who seem to still need things and appreciate saving time. It, this is just an incredible document when I read it, which is why I think other people are ready to read it themselves. I cannot save you more time than you will let me. But if you are willing to try the higher shopping service, <laughs> which also covers lower order necessities and even quite a number of whims within reason, I have very good use for the time we can save. Now, I don't know, that's Jesus being as practical in our lives as it could possibly be. Not only is he going to help us with worldly things, he's helping us with worldly things so we can save our time to begin to, you know, allow our mind to light on that which is not of this world and stay in communication with something that's not here. Remember, the specific answer you get depends on the specific question you ask. The fewer limits you impose, the better the answer you'll get. For example, you could ask, where can I find the Borgata coat? Or where is the coat I want? Or where is the coat I should get? And so on. So that's just an interesting conversation, which I think everybody could appreciate because it, 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 it's going past the idea of Jesus as a spiritual being who has achieved something not in space and time to Jesus is a close personal friend and he wants to help me in all my affairs. Now, that's really what friendship is. That's what brotherhood is. And in these passages, Jesus is really alerting us to that's what he wants to be for us. He's not different from us in any way. He knows exactly what the hell is going on for us here and what's going on the four at a time. And he wants to help us, period. Let me see, that is a page missing. Then um, he goes into these dreams, which I don't know if it's important or not. Oh yeah, let's, let's yeah, we're gonna read it. Okay, Helen, which upset me very badly. This AM 
I remember two indistinct dreams. One, Dr. whoever, KDB, you and me walking down beside Squirrel Park is telling me that I have done something very poorly and that he thought they would have to let me go. But he promised me a portfolio for investing. You were assuring me it would be all right, but I was by no means sure. And then he goes into the Furrier Sun, the Squirrel Park, Mara. This one was about child development program. And here it goes on, insert. Insert here instructions of the dream, dreams, but not dwell on it. Bill got the idea last night. This is first mopping up. Bill and your problems come from false ideas of creation, which have become associated with the body. Hetero relationships are therefore terrifying and induce fears of the destruction of the body, which has been over invested with power. Two steps, both of which must be undone, are often taken to escape from this seeming dilemma. One, pretend the other sex does not exist, i.e. he says lives in darkness. Number two says this rarely suffices in the sane who will still realize that the other sex is there and also that they need them. So instead of giving them autonomy, try, they try to control them by internalization. The result is psychosexual confusion. The solution is to leave creation to God and know that neither male nor female create as such. Then you can accept the physical facts and eventually make them unnecessary. Denial is a bad way to handle fear. Bill and review the male and the teacher. Miracles depend on timing. This is why you shouldn't waste your time. I told you a while back, time would cease when it was no longer useful as a learning aid. There is a way of speeding this up. And that is by leaving more and more time for me so you can devote it to miracles. <sighs> now, that's we're still looking at miracles as these incredible actions. And Jesus is saying, no, man's, we have a right to miracles. They are our natural right as God created beings. And they are as useful to us as anything else in the world if we're willing to use them. And if we understand that there's nothing wrong with using them and we're not special in the utilization of them. It's just a different technology than we're used to using in the world of space and time because it links us with the world beyond space and time because space and time is not is what we're trying to bring an end to so we can get beyond this dream of space and time. The first part of what you wrote last night is right. Check this now. The second part was put in by you because you didn't like the first. Mm. It was an attempt to reestablish your own control over time. Now, which part was that? Which uh, I, it was the part that was put in by you? Oh, I don't know. I take it out. Okay. Yeah, they took All that right. out. The second part, see where it says there's a page missing? Oh, that's it. I okay. think they took the page out, All right. right. First, the second part was put in by you because you didn't like the first. It was an attempt to reestablish your own control over time. Remember, you cannot stand not knowing what time it is. Now, that's just a particular one of Helen's um, Idiosyncr little idiosyncrasies. She's always wanting to know what time it is, what time it is. She doesn't want to waste time. She doesn't want to waste time. She wants to be on time. She wants everything to work in time. And, you know, that's a symptom of something else that Jesus is telling her about. And he's given her another way to not waste time. Use the higher order shopping service 
because I'll save you time that way. Mm -hmm. And that'll give you more time to develop, to work and, and to work with miracles and develop your miraculous abilities. I am not intruding on your will, but I am trying to free it. I told you the next part of the course will place increasing emphasis on atonement. And I define this as undoing. So this is where he begins to give us an understanding of the words as he's using them, which is mm -hmm. to me important to understand. Totally different. So that um, we don't use our own definitions or our own ideas. And like I keep on saying, it's okay if we don't if we don't want to use them, but within the book, this is what he means. And when we use what he means for the words he's using, the book becomes a lot more understandable and it becomes a lot more less errant. We, we have less errant understanding of what he's trying to communicate. So increasing emphasis on atonement and I, and I define this as undoing. You know very well that changing learning patterns requires undoing the old ones. Exactly. The real meaning of retroactive, retroactive inhibition is simply that when two kinds of learning coexist, they interfere with each other. And that's obviously, um, you know, he's talking about the idea of learning, you know, how to use the mind with the Holy Spirit and miraculously, and how to use mind as humans do to survive in space and time. You were wise in setting up the William Rockford, setting up William Rockford to allow measuring both the old and new learning and thus permitting ratio measurements. Now, a lot of this is like really involved with the psychological um, practices and pursuits that she was directly involved with in her life as a psychologist at uh, Columbia Presbyterian Hospital and Bill as well. So this is how specific he is in wanting to deal with exactly what's going on in our life in order for us to save time, get done what we need to get done and devote our minds to something that is truly helpful and is about a new learning. Actually, I helped you on this one. Helen, I'm mad about this. <laughs> Actually, I helped you on this one because most studies just measure learning decrement caused by new learning over the old. But the emphasis should be on how to minimize the effect of the old on the new. This is a much more helpful area to work in. Now, the other part is I like the idea that Helen says, Helen, I'm mad about this. Because it's an indication that you know, it's like talking to our brother. We get pissed off when we, you know, we have conversations and we get upset with our siblings because they don't want it to be the way we want it to be. And we feel we're not being recognized by them. And all that's well and good. But, you know, Jesus is saying, hey, it don't matter whether you're mad or not. This is still the way it is. And if you want to listen to me, that's fine. If you want to be mad, go ahead and be mad. Everything that results in lack of love, this is an aside, Helen, which you used to call sin. So now he's equating the word sin with lack of love. Another, all of us have ideas of what we think sin is based on what, you know, whatever, however we were brought up. The idea of sin has been in the human consciousness for years and years and years. And we all have ideas. And we, if we read the Course, with those old ideas, it becomes confusing because he's not talking about sin in the same way that we're thinking about it. He's talking about sin in this way, as a lack of love. Everything that results in lack of love is the result of inferior learning, which if overlearned becomes very stable, unstable. 
Miracles are a way of undoing overlearned patterns of love lack. They bring light into darkness. That is where their atonement value lies. Now, do not get bogged down in those dreams of last night. They are reflections of old learning patterns and arose because you did not like what I said about leaving the minutiae to me. They merely illustrate your unwillingness to get bogged down because you are afraid of the course. So don't use them that way. If you are tempted to do this, ask Bill to stop you. Like, ask for help. Ask for Bill to stop you because she's with Bill all day long and they're always working on this kind of stuff. And there's a way to deal with this stuff in, 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 in a better way that gives more efficient and more effective results. This course is about willingness, not unwillingness. Unwillingness has to be replaced by willingness because willingness is part of readiness without which learning cannot occur. He says, go and look up atonement and then get dressed to save time wear exactly what I tell you and go. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so she looks up atonement, atonement. It's a short for to set at one or reconcile to agree. Obviously, before reconciliation or agreement is possible, the discordant or out of accord must be undone. It may seem as if darkness must be dispelled before light can come in. But the truth is that darkness is dispelled by light. And this is one of the problems that I have with a lot of the people who teach the course and tell you that you have to dispel the darkness on your own before you can get guidance. He's saying the exact opposite. Because the truth is that darkness is dispelled by the light. And if I'm the light of the world, just let me step in in the midst of the darkness. You know how to deal with it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been in it in the first place. So it's very practical stuff. Helen, last night I was planning to type up the course for you, but we strictly ordered not to go back to it before I got over Wally. It seems that the course has a lot of answers and carries a lot of very high point credits. But as you always say, you have to know the questions first. This morning, I did ask for help with Wally. The answer seems to lie in point six and seven. That is why he gave me the chalice for Wally. It belongs to him, but he didn't find it. So when he goes to six and seven, those are the miracle principles. In the beginning, he's got the 10 miracle principles. Actually, I think there's 12. Something that mattered with me. I suddenly get it. But all I remember is that it came with the realization that it was not what I thought. Then I got the lesson below, plain. And there you go. It's always not what I thought. It's not what I was thinking. That's why we need the correction. Because how we're thinking doesn't help. It slows down our need for time until we get to the point where we're willing to let go of our thought in order to get the correction. And all we have to do is stay in the condition of, I don't know what it is. I don't know. It may not be what I'm thinking. If it's what I'm thinking, it'll be fine. If it's not what I'm thinking, then I get the correction and it's still fine. Tell Bill it does not matter that he didn't remember the dream. Leave everything to him equals my feelings regarding Gar Gary, Art, etc all of which I can simply refer to him and not get bogged down in. This is the real secret of not wasting energy. I asked him to stay with my unconscious while I slept and just passed out. Two, help me perform whatever miracles you want me to today. Correct the point about cobwebs of iron. That one is upside down, as stated. The part about uniting you in frailty with the strength of God is all right. This is incredible, too. This is, this is how 
precise and how like and how much he understands both what he's talking about and why he talks about it with us. The part about uniting human frailty with the strength of God is all right, but the explanation stops too soon. If iron is the raw material, cobwebs can't become iron. That is only the way it seems because cobwebs are associated with the frailty and iron with strength. If you look carefully at the phrasing, you will see it is reversed. One point already tells you that miracles reverse the physical or lower order laws. The raw material or iron is heavy but crude and stands for the body, which is a crude creation. Cobweb concept is closer to how you should be regarded as an airy and temporary home, which can be blown away with the slightest breeze. Now that's interesting. A miracle reawakens the awareness that the spirit and not the body is the altar of truth. This is the recognition that leads to the healing power of the miracle. The miracle rearranges the order of perception and places the levels in their true perspective. This heals at all levels because all sickness comes from confusing levels. And he says, I must be getting confused myself. I repeated this myself backwards and corrected as per. Tell Bill about the idea. Helen, still too dim to me. That the reason is not that you doubt or distantiate or cannot believe. It is more of a reaction formation against the pull, which you both recognize is so intense that you are afraid. You think you will be uprooted, but remember that a cobweb is really stronger than the iron, if you see it properly. This fear is also why you couldn't get the point straight. By the way, it is not true that you are both just scribes. You might remember that the scribes were very wise and holy men and are even sometimes spelled with a capital S. If you want to go further, you might change the meaning of just from merely to honest. There's another reinterpretation of a word as he's using it when he says you're just scribes, means you're honest. A term used in the Bible in association with might or strength. Hell, Bill, you couldn't make that pun if the original <laughs> phrasing had been singular. <laughs> Helen, I like the first about assumption failure more. Answer, it was cuter, but this one means more. The real reason you don't like it is because it refers to you in a very lofty position, and that makes you nervous. <laughs> and don't lose sight of the emphasis on cooperation or the not singular. That point about industrial necessity should use corporate, should read corporate, referring to the body of Christ, which is a way of referring to the church. But the church of God is only the sum of the souls he created, which is the corporate body of Christ. Correct to read, a, miracles, a miracle makes souls one in Christ leave in the next part about cooperation. God should read Christ. The Father and the Son are not identical, but you can say like Father, like Son. Remind Bill to get another notebook. I don't give up as easily as he does. <laughs> if I could get you to listen, I could get him to register. Getting you to listen was a miracle in itself, which should appreciate which he should appreciate more than anyone else, having had some trouble with this problem himself. So I think that's a good place to stop for today. And anybody have anything they want to say or anything? I love, just like you said today, the natural, 
conversation, the natural inner dialogue, because the truth is for me, that is my inner dialogue so that I don't have self-talk anymore of, you know, oh, being upset or judging anything. My inner dialogue has just naturally switched to this natural kind of conversation with Jesus or the Holy Spirit. And this is such a great example because it is wherever I step, you know, to get um, direction that's helpful so that, so that we're used wholly and not wasting our time doing nothing. So you know, one of the things I have a friend of mine, he, put, he puts, a, I did the workbook lessons on YouTube and he uses my workbook lessons every day, he puts them up on his site and stuff. And the reason why he told me he does is because I laugh during them. You know, I laugh when I read them and they make me laugh because Jesus to me is a comedian. And while we can take this seriously, it doesn't mean that we can't laugh at ourselves in the process. And the ability to laugh at ourselves and laugh at what's going on is really pretty freeing rather than looking at ourselves so seriously and judging ourselves based on that seriousness and thinking that Jesus is that kind of person. Jesus is as serious as they come and as honest and as forthcoming as they come, but he wants everything to be a joke because it was a tiny man idea, which we remember not to laugh. And he's trying to get us to laugh at everything. I like hearing you read this, Teddy. This is cool. Oh, thank you. It really is. And I will attest to, even in my own self, I give, I try to remember to give to Jesus little things. Thank you. And I call him doodle. Like, All right, dude, if this is you, right. these are the things I need. And I'm just, I don't know what to do. Right exactly. now. And so, and then it'll just either, it'll work out or it'll be, it'll be stupid, terrible. I mean, terrible, stupid. I mean, stupid, terrible. I'm like, what the hell now? Right? Should, what did I not hear? So it is funny. It is. It is funny. The tiny man idea, which we remember not to laugh. Yeah. And now we're beginning to laugh at our own dumb ideas, which is a good yeah, thing. Yeah, I know. Which is the original era. We had a dumb idea. We forgot. We remember not to laugh. What I like to is there's no terrible thing to make up for, no matter how much of an error we had. Correction is just right now. Oh, that was stupid. Just right now. Come right back. Just right now. Here I am. Help me. Here I am. Help me. And all of that mistake and past gets just dust under the door, gone. It's nothing that I have to deal with or worry about. I don't have to worry about the consequences, the past, the future, none of it. So I love the immediacy of, oh, I forgot just right now. I come back to you. I'm asking you just right now. Take over right now. So yeah. then there's no reason not to be happy because there's no place that's unsafe anymore. He's even right. done earlier on. He says, I've canceled out all the errors of your past anyway. Right. Well, the only ones we're interested in are the ones that are happening now. <laughs> And the other thing I feel is we, all these little families all over time and space, we're being brought together really to get solid and stable in this Christ mind that is ours, that demonstrates, that Jesus does demonstrate, but it is our mind. And we're getting used to thinking with this light in our mind rather than fear, because there are waves and waves of brothers coming now that need us to be really stable as this awakening takes greater, greater dimensions. So whatever it looks like, whether things might fall apart or whatever it looks like, we need to be stable in the light and not be threatened by anything outside of us. So uh, this is a precious time where we are being together, brought together in our little families to get very stable, very strong and very happy. Join together in the truth instead of sitting at home alone, just trying to meditate and realize something. The re it's the utilization of the realization as a practical way of being here in space and time, but not being of it. And that's what Jesus wants us to see and experience. <laughs> there was a section, there was a section um, 
on page 27, where he says the body should be seen as an airy and temporary home. Right. It can just be blown away with the slightest breeze. Right, exactly. It reminds me of two things. One, uh, a movie of Tibet many years ago where it focused on the cremation of a corpse and in real time. And that was just wonderful, just watching the body disintegrate. And then another experience of in meditation, but looking into a partner's eyes. And at one point with just gazing, just looking, there's that feeling that you could just lean forward and blow and the whole <laughs> body would just disintegrate. <laughs> right, but the solidity of who we are stays there because we're not the body. Yeah, but we've just got these illusory bonds in our mind that make it real. So the more we can feel the light that shines through everything and get to experience that and know that, the more our fear dissolves. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. We'll thank see you, you everyone. See you in Zoom. See you in Zoom. <laughs>